reason we're gathered here, of course, for is to discuss ProPix, uh, the new uh, service from investing.com, uh, basically, uh, you know, as part of the uh, ongoing journey uh, by investing.com to uh, really allow the retail trader to uh, gain access uh, to tools and resources, which up until a, a little while ago was only available uh, to uh, the major uh, hedge funds, the institutional investors, uh, you know, so as part of our journey to really uh, democratize uh, financial data, financial information, uh, ProPix is our latest step in that journey. Uh, my name is Jesse Cohen. I'm a senior analyst at investing.com. Joining me today is Andy Pai. Uh, he is the VP of Investing Pro. Uh, so obviously, no better person uh, in in uh, in the world, I would say, even to uh, uh, go over uh, uh, the, the features and benefits and to really guide us uh, through everything uh, that uh, we have in store for you. Uh, so uh, yeah, ProPix is our new approach uh, to simplify your investment uh, decision making. Uh, some of the things we'll go over today, of course, is you know why. What is the reason that we even came up uh, with uh, this? Uh, uh, and if you could go back to the uh, uh, previous uh, slide, I'll just uh, going over the uh, uh, syllabus for today, the agenda, you know, the problem, why is there a need for investing pro, pro picks, the solution, you know, what we're here to provide you with. Uh, we'll then uh, delve uh, very briefly into all the uh, research. You know, it's all AI driven. So a lot of different cool uh, technological uh, uh, aspects uh, that we want to kind of share with you. Uh, the, the back testing, which has proven over time, uh, you know, these strategies have beaten the uh, broader market uh, uh, on a uh, yearly basis every year since its inception in 2016. Uh, so basically continuously beating the S&P 500 by a, bro by a wide margin. Uh, so we'll go over some of the back testing there uh, make sure that uh, uh you know you uh, you as the user uh, understands all that we're offering here uh and uh then we'll uh, uh andy over here will uh delve into uh the product itself give you guys a a, a, a demo basically what it is how it works how you can find the other uh, winners um so yeah we got an exciting i would say 45 to 60 minutes ahead uh before we get started you know what's in store for 2024 uh, you know, there's a lot of uncertainty in the market. Investors are facing uh, uh, many headwinds on uh, a, a lot of different fronts. You know, judging by the stock market's uh, uh, performance in 2022 uh, or in 2023, uh, you'd figure that, you know, everything is rosy and, and no problems in the world, no worries at all. Uh, but yeah, there's a lot of uh, uh, several headwinds, potential risk in the market as we head into the new year. You know, first and foremost, obviously, it's all about the Fed, Fed policy. Are we going higher for longer? Markets are betting on rate cuts. Uh, you know, Fed Chair Powell has kind of pushed back on that idea uh, several times uh, uh, before. So there's a big Fed meeting coming up uh, uh, mid-December. We'll get to hear from Fed Chair Powell. And that will obviously determine a lot of what we'll expect uh, to see in uh, the year ahead uh, and, and uh, you know, where, where that goes. Quantitative tightening, rate cuts, higher for longer. So yeah, there's a lot of uh, different uh, uh, scenarios for that, how that plays out. There's also the global economic slowdown, you know, soft landing versus hard landing. Uh, there's a lot of uh, uh, different, uh, uh, you know, views on that. Will the economy hold up better than expected uh, despite all these uh, uh, different uh, headwinds uh, facing uh, the, uh, you know, the, the economy? Inflation, of course, has been the main driver of policy in the last, you know, 12 to 18 months. So we'll get to see if inflation, does it reaccelerate in the months ahead? Does it keep trending down to the Fed's uh, target, which would allow uh, the Fed to uh, really uh, uh, loosen policy in uh, the year ahead? Ge uh, you know, the geopolitical turmoil all around the world. There's a lot of different uh, uh, fronts going on right now. Uh, the ongoing situation uh, in Ukraine with uh, uh, Russia and Ukraine. Uh, the the uh, recent uh, clashes in the Middle East uh, between uh, Israel and Hamas, of course, there's a lot of uh, fears that maybe Iran or, or, or the U.S. could join and then it becomes a regional conflict. And, you know, we're, we aren't even talking about uh, the, uh, host the hostility in the uh, South uh, China Sea uh, with uh, Taiwan, potentially, you know, that could be a major wild card uh, heading into 2024 if uh, China does, in fact, uh, uh, you know, performing military operation uh, uh, surrounding Taiwan. 
all hell could potentially break loose. Uh, and of course, unpredictable, unpredictable energy markets, uh, you know, with oil prices being the main driver of inflation, you know, there's a lot of uh, uh, supply uncertainty, uh, OPEC supply cuts, uh, you know, uh, the geopolitical tensions with uh, which, of course, feed into uh, the oil rich region in uh, the Middle East. So there's a lot of uh, uh, uncertainty on that front as well. We've seen the bond market a main driver of uh, price action. The 10-year yield shot up to 5%, and everybody thought it was the end of the world. Now we're back at about 4.2% uh, as of this morning. So we've seen a pullback in bond yields. Question is, 2024, will we see a sharper slowdown than expected, perhaps signaling a deeper economic slowdown? Or we'll maybe uh, get a re uh, acceleration on uh, that front and 10-year yields move back up as a result of the higher for longer Fed policy. And finally, last but not least, we've got a presidential election in the U.S. coming up in less than a year. Uh, you know, as of right now, Donald Trump is actually the favorite uh, to uh, uh, win the uh, the election. You know, uh, Joe Biden. Uh, I think his poll, uh, the polling on him, the favorability polls are at record lows. Uh, so we'll see uh, how that develops, and you know, if the market reacts as a, a result of a, perhaps a Donald Trump returning as president. So, you know, as I've mentioned here, a lot of different uh, uh, scenarios that can play out in 2024, a lot of uncertainty. You know, I, as an investor, and I think pretty much all of us are, are questioning, how can we protect our portfolio in 2024? How can we find the winners to really boost our, our returns in the face of all this uncertainty. And, you know, that's where pro picks comes uh, right into play. Uh, I, you know, I'm going to pass the baton on to Andy uh, to really uh, guide us uh, down along that uh, uh, trip and hopefully help us find some winners, uh, you know, in the face of all these different, uh, uh, you know, the potential risk uh, heading into 2024. Andy, the floor is yours, my friend. Amazing. Thank you so much, Jesse. Uh, thank you, everyone, for joining. I uh, really appreciate you taking the time out to do that. Uh, so hopping right into, into ProPick. So um, if, you're in, if you're a user of investing.com or if you're considering it, um, becoming a user, one of the things that we do best and what makes us one of the top retail investing sites in the world is that we allow our users to rely on us uh, to help them stay informed about their investments, the markets in general. Uh, the site has a ton of data and content. Um, and so, but the breadth of our offering also has created another problem for some of our users where they feel overwhelmed by the amount of information that's even available. And um, what this leads to is them not taking any action at all. And so we'll often hear users say things like, hey, can you just tell me which stocks I should buy? Or uh, wow, this is a lot of information. Um, you know, where do I even get started? Or, or do, do, does any, do any of these data points actually work? And so as a product team uh, and as a leader on the product team, we took this as, a, as, a, as kind of a challenge statement and we tried to design a solution. And so, you know, putting our, putting our brainstorming hats on, we came up with this idea for pro pick strategies. And the objective of this was to get to, to find strategies that were simple to follow, immediately actionable, uh, with evidence of support. And so, how, how do you start breaking down a problem like this? Well, we first started referencing the academic literature, trying to figure out: Are there people that have done this in the past? Are there academic institutions that have that have uh, released papers on this topic of being able to use? Uh, financial metrics, for example, to be able to build portfolios and strategies. And so we studied some of the key literature. Uh, some of you may have heard of the G-score uh, by, by Professor uh, uh, Mohan Ram. And so we took, we took inspiration from a lot of the academic literature and then combined it with some of the recent breakthroughs that you may have been hearing about day in, day out um, in, in AI. And so what this looks like in practice is we took some of our institutional grade premium data feeds, um, some of the top vendors in the world we partner with for, for data, and then we pre-processed it to ensure even greater reliability and accuracy uh, for model training. And then, you know, searching for a whole bunch of different um, ML and AI model providers to do some of the training um, infrastructure 
And so we found Google Vertex to be a great solution for us on that front. And then we got to work on actually building some of these strategies and training some of our models to be able to efficiently create portfolios. And so after about uh, a year in the, in, in the making, you know, 50 plus million data points, 100 plus, 100 plus thousand back tests, we honed in on six strategies. Uh, one of which uh, we call quite simply beat the S&P. And this is the performance of, of that strategy. And so you can see you know, something like 600% um, outperformance over the S&P and how it works is it, there's monthly rebalancing. So every month we'll release a, a new list of companies. Uh, some of them may carry over from the previous month. Uh, it just depends on, on um, the algorithms uh, outputs. And, um, in this strategy in particular, there's a large cap focus. And for those of you familiar with portfolio stats, um, a Sortino ratio of uh, 1.46. Uh, Sortino is one of my favorite ratios because it doesn't necessarily penalize you for some of the downside volatility um, or sort of the upside volatility. And so, um, yeah, I'd love to also now be able to, sh to show you this, this product is now live. And so I'd love to be able to kind of demo it live uh, for you. And so uh, let's start with the desktop version. Um, so this, this is ProPix. Uh, it's uh, under the Investing Pro Premium Dashboard. Um, you can see here the six strategies I mentioned. Uh, they range in the type of investors that they, uh, in the type of investment style. So lots of investors love following the indices. So we have strategies targeted um, at uh, indices like S&P 500 and the Dow Jones. These are the first two uh, you can see on the screen. Uh, there are also strategies like Tech Titans that are focused on a specific sector, uh, value stocks, focus on a, a type of uh, portfolio constituent where their um, PE ratios are, are uh, in sort of the undervalued territory uh, or sort of more reasonable. Um, I know many of you like following famous investors and sort of what they're doing. So one of them being Warren Buffett. And so we, we took constituents from his historical portfolios and saw how the algorithm performed uh, and could, if it could outperform uh, his prior selections. And then also something focused on uh, um, the mid cap strategy. So kind of market cap focus, size focus. And so that's the last strategy here. So we can do a, a, a sort of a, a more deep dive into one of the, these, so the beat the S&P strategy, um, you can see the performance, uh, the list of companies, uh, the types, the different kind of key key metrics um, supporting supporting this this back test. Uh, a bit more information on what goes into these strategies, how they compare with other indices. So you can see the max drawdown, some of the portfolio stats that that are important. And then also what kind of selections this algorithm, this, this portfolio strategy made in the past, it's very easy to, to kind of get a sense for the types of companies that this strategy entails. Uh, and these can easily be copied to a watch list um, per, your, per your liking. And as I mentioned, uh, this strategy in particular, it rebalances monthly equal weighting. And um, uh, that's, that, that's sort of some of the ways that you can, you can start leveraging these, these uh, portfolio strategies. We also support this on mobile. So if, if, you, if, you, if you prefer the mobile app, uh, we have these strategies also available on the go. Uh, and you can get a sense for, for the types of companies that are in there as well on your mobile device. Um, the, the links to download the app are, are available in the presentation, which, which we'll also share. Um, so taking a step back. Wow. Let me just uh, jump in there uh, one second. I did uh, share some uh, uh, links in the uh, uh, chat box there uh, already for some of those uh, strategies uh, which you uh, highlighted. Uh, also, if you have any questions, thoughts, because I'm already uh, getting uh, some uh, uh, questions over here. If you have any questions, thoughts, or comments or whatever, you can also type them uh, in there throughout the webinar, and we'll be sure to pass that on to Andy, uh, or either Andy or myself will answer them uh, at the end of the uh, uh, presentation. Uh, go right ahead, Andy. Perfect, thanks. Great to hear that there's there's already questions piling up. Uh, I'd love to see it. Uh, so yeah, just just kind of finishing up. Uh, you know, we're, we're no strangers to innovation here. We've been we've been at this for 15 plus years, starting with a very focused use case of only 4x, um, and then kind of expanding in concentric circles around that. 
uh, to focus on economic data and charts, and then localizing the content so we're available in 25 plus languages. Uh, mobile access, one of the top apps in the app stores, whether it's Play Store or the uh, or the iOS store, and then um, via the acquisition of, of Finbox and Street Insider, really enhancing uh, some of our fundamental tools. And so this is just the next evolution of where we see the company going with really democratizing access for retail investors to uh, the new new improved tools such as artificial intelligence. And why we see this being the case is because when we look at kind of the trading activity in the market, today something like 60 to 80% of all of the trading volume is algorithmic. And this is across markets. It's hard to estimate always what the what the exact number is, but we, we reference different sources, and this is ballpark correct, not just in the U.S., for example, but also in Europe and Asia. And so, what that means is, three out of four times when one of our retail investors is placing a trade, the person or the or sort of the bot at the other side of that trade is a, an algorithm. And so, it's kind of more important than ever to start embracing some of these technologies that have been coming out over the last uh, over the last decade really but really take you know accelerated over the last year um, so propix uh, is, a, is, our, is one of our uh, uh, tools in, in that space but you know we've really been over the last year uh, some of you avid users of the platform may have noticed you know we've significantly improved our, our news coverage we're really really embracing these technologies to improve the type of coverage we have, the type of translations uh, or sort of the number of translations that we have, um, the speed at which we deliver all of this content, um, all things that really fighting for the, the retail investor that, that we love to serve. Um, and, you know, we're just getting started here. Uh, you'll, you'll hear much more from us about um, some of the exciting improvements, whether, whether it is the content, the chat, and um, so some other tools, you know, I'd, I'd be excited to share with you uh, in Q1 of next year. So, um, yeah, and Jesse? Uh, yeah, of course, you know, uh, just a token of our appreciation here for uh, uh, joining us uh, this morning. We've got an exclusive uh, offer, gift offer, just for our for the webinar attendees uh, this morning. Obviously, if you've registered, you, you'll also receive it uh, via our recording. But basically, uh, as attending uh, this webinar we've got an exclusive coupon code uh, just for you and i'll share that uh, in the chat box here as well uh it basically you get another uh 10 off on top of our already uh and if you could uh, uh go ahead to the next uh, slide on top of the already uh, uh, 60 percent off that we offer uh, during the uh, uh, Black uh, Friday Cyber Monday, it's basically you know this uh, month-long uh, extravaganza. So entering Pro Picks 10 when you uh, go to sign up on the uh, sign up page, you get an additional 10 percent off in signing up uh, for the Pro Plus two-year plan. Basically, that gives you access to Pro Picks, the AI-driven uh, uh, stock picking uh, uh, feature, as well as the advanced the stock screener, uh, uh, multiple uh, or hundreds of uh, financial metrics uh, to evaluate companies, uh, multiple ratings, uh, expert analysis, breaking news. So basically, there's a whole bunch of uh, features over there. Um, when going to the uh, sign up page, basically, all you got to do is uh, select uh, the two year plan, uh, enter Pro Picks 10 where it says uh, 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 coupon if you have a coupon. So ProPix 10 is what you want to uh, type in there and boom, automatically you uh, apply that, you receive your discount on the spot and end up saving over $500 uh, over the course of the uh, two year uh, plan. So obviously if you have any uh, thoughts, you know, you know, any loved ones who like uh, investing in the stock market, you know, Christmas is right around the corner. Uh, so obviously this could make a great gift or, you know, if you're investing, obviously, and you're looking for more resources, like we mentioned earlier at the start, something like this would only be available uh, to the institutional investors, uh, you know, the major hedge funds that pay thousands of dollars uh, each month uh, for uh, several uh, for their different services. So basically, we're offering all that for, you know, less than four dollars a, a, a week um uh for uh, the month i think but probably even like you know less than a cup of coffee uh for uh per week so basically this is your time right now take advantage of the offer uh it will be valid until uh, um january 31st i believe so you've got a, a bit of time but i'll share all of those uh details uh in the chat box over there 
you know, this is uh, the holiday season. We're feeling generous. So on top of the 60% off, you get another 10%. Why not? This is the, uh, this is the offer you've been waiting for. Probably won't be a better price uh, all year. So yeah, basically, like I said, you get all those different features, invest smarter, save time and effort, let pro picks do all the work for you. And obviously you'll see better results over time. Been back tested over the years. Uh, you can beat the uh, S&P 500 by hundreds of percent. I mean, who, who would have want that? So uh, yeah, this is uh, like I mentioned, uh, your pro picks 10, you get the coupon code, get your 70% uh, discount when uh, calculating it, it all together. So yeah. Andy, your back to you. Amazing, yeah. So, uh, any questions that that came up? You know, happy to happy to answer, Jesse. Um, I know you've been monitoring the chat. Uh, yeah, we've got a few over here. Basically, uh, well, the first question, you know, I I like where this is going. Uh, is there an option where you know, I, I guess with the different uh, scenarios for the bear market, a potential bear market, is there an opportunity to short it, uh, uh, stocks? on investing pro we're using pro picks yeah great, great great question so that is something that we we may expand into going forward um, but kind of going back to some of the principles of like why we designed this in the first place is we wanted to really make this as simple as possible to follow and so shorting uh, and actions like that require margin accounts and, and sort of a, a bit more um, sophistication starting you know day one and so um they kind of broke that rule and so we, we've, we've avoided that for now but you know we, we could likely deliver even better performance um if we were to to embark on that uh but as i said it, it does make the whole strategy more complicated and a bit more risky if you don't you know take positions on and off um and so none of the strategies today require shorting Cool, but yeah, I mean, uh, you know, something to look forward to perhaps, especially uh, if uh, 2024 does prove to be a rough year for markets. We got a question here from Thomas uh, asking, um, you know, he's a, he's a day trader. Is it best to use this for long-term portfolio management or day trading? Yeah, Good so we, we, we rebalance the, the portfolios uh, monthly in most cases, uh, with, the, with the exception of the, of the Beat the Buffett strategy, which is quarterly because the holdings themselves are reported in 13F filings, uh, which is a regulatory filing that, that anyone managing over, or I think $100 million in assets has to, has to file. Um, and so um, other than that, they, they are mostly monthly rebalance. And so, yeah, it's not like you have to actively daily monitor for changes or anything like that. There's kind of a fixed cadence with which we we uh, release new picks for, for each company, uh, uh, for, for each strategy, sorry. Yeah, I mean, I think uh, it would make uh, most sense too, you know, the, 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 the winners, you know, it's, it's in the holding the, the, of, of, of the stock, you know, like, like Warren Buffett says, you know, the, the money's made in holding the stock, uh, you know, obviously if you're day trading in and out of names, uh, perhaps, you know, different uh, strategies are uh, better suited for you. But yeah, obviously if I'm, if I'm using pro picks, you know, this is, this is for, for, for the long term. Um, I'm holding stocks for, um, you know, at, at least a, a time frame of uh, three, four weeks or with the uh, monthly rebalance, which I got a question here as well. Uh, how does it work on a monthly basis? How do I know what to do each month? Like do, we, we do have the monthly uh, rebalancing, which you uh, mentioned earlier. Yeah, yeah. So um, I think we had a slide on this just to kind of help us follow along here. Um, so, That's a good question from a uh, user from uh, Matan. Good question. All right. Yeah, so here, here we go. Let's see. Um, all right. So this is kind of a step-by-step. -step. So if we, if we start with uh, the illustrative example, like what will happen in December, uh, after the markets close today, uh, we'll take the most recent data um, from, so basically, you know, as of November 30th, market closed, and we'll use that to make uh, the predictions required from the model to update our strategies. And the latest financial data will then um, get used uh, by the model to um, 
uh, update the website. And so they'll be published on investing.com um, for implementation uh, by the 1st of December. So kind of tomorrow. Uh, so th this is this is the type of um, cadence that we, we you know we, we would follow for any monthly rebalance strategy um, is using the latest data up to the the last day of trading uh, prior to the rebalance date. Uh, cool. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm also getting a bunch of uh, uh, comments or um, uh, requests here. If we can please send this uh, session through email. So just to let you all know that, you know, we once you've registered, uh, you will receive the, re the recording as well. So um, you could go over this, of course. Uh, uh, again, you know, there's a lot of information uh, to uh, unpack. So definitely you will receive this session uh, through email. Um, we've got another question here coming in from uh, Madhu. Um, would it be possible to construct a portfolio from NASDAQ 100 using the same models? You know, tech names, of course, you know, everybody loves those, those tech names, the high growth tech names, the AI, the AI stocks, cloud. Um, and so, yeah, that's, um, you know, obviously something which uh, would be in the works. Yeah, absolutely. So, so that's, that's a great question. Um, so what I can say about that is one of the one of the challenges with being able to back test the strategy is knowing all of the historical constituents of that index, um, and so we just didn't have that data for the Nasdaq 100. But there's nothing uh, other than that that would stop us from being able to create uh, a, a strategy that's focused on that. And so um, the tech there, there is a strategy here. Um, called Tech Titans, that's sort of a, 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 trying to align itself with that NASDAQ index is just that because of the um, beca because of the historical constituents uh, data that we didn't have at the time of formulating these strategies, we didn't you know, necessarily benchmark directly against that. D does that answer does that answer the question? Let's see. Uh, yeah, yeah. I mean, uh, I think I think uh, that uh, definitely answered it. I mean, that the, the tech titans, you know, obviously the constituents of the Nasdaq 100, like you mentioned, you know, they're changing, uh, you know, different names coming in, different names coming out. But uh, you know, the tech titans obviously gets you the those select uh, group of uh, tech winners that you want uh, to be in. Uh, so yeah, you know, that's uh, definitely something to uh, consider. Uh, I'm getting this question um, from uh, several different users and I guess like different uh, variations. Because um, right now, I guess uh, we're only offering it to, to uh, US stocks uh, and Wall Street. So I'm getting uh, questions here from uh, uh, Denendra and Adrian, uh, basically asking, will this be available uh, in other markets, uh, India, um, UK? Um, and, and you know, I, I guess any other market, but those are the two specifics uh, that came up here. Yeah, excellent question, um, all of you. Thank you. So definitely, that that's that's like priority number one for us on our product roadmap is now just taking what we've done for primarily U.S. traded stocks and expanding it to other uh, other markets. And um, it, in terms of execution we can leverage most of, most or all of the infrastructure that we've already built to do that it's just a matter of expanding the data set and then um, getting comfortable with formulating strategies for those markets um, there's just things to uh, that maybe is not obvious to start but um, um, one of the challenges is, is making sure that currency fluctuations don't necessarily influence the returns as well um, and so uh, we we We'll, we'll, we'll basically try to create really pure single currency focused portfolios for additional markets in, in early uh, 2024. Amazing. Um, yeah, because uh, Martin Martin, uh, Martin here is also asking, uh, will it be available for uh, cryptocurrencies? Uh, yeah, that, that, that's a great question. Um, there, we don't have a direct plan to do that at the moment. I think what we've discussed internally is maybe formulating portfolios with multiple asset classes, with crypto potentially being one of them, and using sort of diversification um, and, and um, market correlations that may, that are are more diverse um, as a strategy. And so 
and not necessarily crypto focus entirely because that's a little bit hard to have metrics um, that we could get comfortable with uh, in a in portfolio context, but maybe as a combination with other other assets uh, that may be less correlated with crypto and using that as a way to um, have, have better performance and sort of lower risk uh, per per measure of return. So um, that that's you know there's a lot of demand though uh, you know we we, we may pursue it uh, more aggressively um, if if that uh, um, if that ends up being the case. This is a new new product that we're releasing, and so uh, you know we're always looking for feedback from users. So if you have suggestions, recommendations. For us, on ways that we can improve, you know, we're always listening. I'm always monitoring all of the support channels uh, to see the types of feedback that we're getting from users. Yeah, amazing. You know, especially with the uh, ever shifting financial landscape, I'm actually uh, bullish on cryptocurrencies heading into 2024. I think there's a lot of excitement surrounding potential uh, ETF approvals. Uh, you know, BlackRock have a few in the work as well. So I think like once uh, we get those ETFs from BlackRock, uh, you know, trading in cryptocurrencies could become a more institutionalized, more uh, mainstream, perhaps less uh, volatile and, uh, you know, uh, uh, risky as it was uh, up until today. So yeah, 2024 could be a, uh, a year or two. We'll definitely look into that. Um, so yeah, trading a uh, cryptocurrency strategy, I, not something I thought would be possible or something I'd even consider a few years ago. Uh, I am actually, uh, I would consider that. Uh, we got a question here from Joe uh, asking, do we need to fully follow the strategy for it to work or can we just pick stocks from it? Yeah, so, so we, we recommend uh, following the strategy, at least the, um, the, the historical backtest assumes following the strategy, right? So, um, and, and it's, it's not always like one month or um, a couple months. Um, it, it, it tends to be outperforming over sort of longer periods of time. And so uh, one of the things um, the, as, as an input to showing this, this historical performance of the back test, uh, it would be, um, you know, assuming that you follow the, the, the strategy, but so far we've seen actually a combination, you know, some, some users uh, use this as, as uh, another data point in their own analysis for valuing companies or, or sort of looking at the companies that they're interested in. So um, it's, it's really up to, you know, we, we don't want to, we obviously don't make any recommendations uh, or, or um, suggestions of what you should and should not do. Uh, but um, there's kind of different ways that we've seen users creatively leverage these strategies in their own investing, uh, so, you know, starting with um, following them exactly to uh, following them um, sort of piecemeal. Yeah, obviously, you know, there's a lot of different factors, of course, uh, coming in, um, uh, obviously different factors, of course, that impact that. Uh, got a question here from uh, Jose. Uh, is there a strategy for bonds? Or will there be a strategy for bonds? Yeah, I, 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 great question. I alluded to this a bit earlier, but yeah, I think having a, a multi-asset class portfolio is, is like one of the top requests we actually got from our CEO. Because um, the, the, if, if you've used investing.com at all, uh, you'll see, you know, we follow just almost any asset that's traded anywhere. Uh, you right. know, we, we try to have prices and, and quotes and data for that and news. And so that includes anything from commodities like gold, silver, uh, cryptocurrencies, um, as well as currencies in general, futures. So there's there's a ton a ton of assets, especially um, uh, that can be used to uh, hedge against each other and um, deliver better um, returns per unit of risk. And so uh, bonds, obviously, being being a very important part especially in the recent, you know, last uh, 12 to 24 months where interest rates are now, um, you can actually get, get a decent interest rate in, in bank accounts in, in most countries in the world. So um, that's, that's certainly top of mind for us, for sure. Uh, we got a good question here, um, Adrian, again, uh, how many stocks are typically in a strategy or does it depend on, uh, you know, set that specific strategy? Yeah, so we typically, so I think you, you'll see it, um, 
it all was always listed with the strategy itself. And so um, we have a max holdings in the description. So it's typically around 15 to 20. And then when for, for, for strategies like dominate the Dow, which the total constituent pool, the total number of companies in the Dow Jones index is only 30. And so uh, the max holdings there would be, would be 10. Uh, but for the most part, it's around 15 to 20, 20 companies. Uh, uh, Brian here is asking, uh, you know, what's the update process? Uh, how often are these picks updated? And can you please give us more insight on that process? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, so again, co covered it a bit, but let's let's look at it again uh, here. So um, you know, assuming the next update um, will, if if we look at um, so what would happen actually today, since today is November thirtieth, uh, after market close, we would update all of our financial metrics and also the get new predictions from the model for the month of December based on what the companies look like today. And that that's, you know, 18 plus thousand companies that the, the algorithm is analyzing. And so um, based on the new suggestions, uh, we will publish the rebalance portfolios um, sort of by the end of the day, um, uh, for, uh, December 1st. So by December 1st, basically it's, it's available uh, on the platform. And so from there, you can, um, th there's different tools we offer. Obviously you can just view them, uh, but also uh, many of you, many, one of the most popular tools actually we have on investing.com is the watch list tool. And so it's very easy in one click, you can start copying them um, to your watch list and it'll just kind of put them in. Um, and and there's, there's, you can also get additional metrics on each of these. Uh, so, if you like customizing um, and getting more information about say the PE ratio or whatever, it's, it's really easy to add uh, metrics and get more data on each of these companies that are in the, in, in the watch list. So. We got a question uh, from Sam, who is a pro user. Uh, shout out to Sam. Uh, I generally hey. review every stock I'm looking to buy on investing pro before moving forward. Will these two tools complement each other? Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah, we we highly recommend. Uh, obviously, before making any investment, right, doing your own research, we have a lot of tools. That's kind of our bread and butter is to really be able to provide tools for for folks like you to be able to m manage that process as efficiently and as effectively as possible. And so, um, making sure that the data is of the highest quality, sourced from the highest data, highest quality data sources uh, with really low latency. Um, after earnings, for example, and, and all the metrics are updated. So, absolutely, uh, I think I think um, even I, I just I just showed some ways that you can do that with creating a watch list, adding some metrics that you really care about, um, clicking on each of those metrics. We usually give definitions, for example, for for you know how how many of these metrics are calculated. So I can show you, for example, Nasdaq. Uh, you know, if, if you were to look at the market cap. Um, not only will we show historical trends in any of these metrics to help you do your research, uh, but also kind of the calculations uh, on each of the company pages, really anything that you'd want to know, ranging from dividends about the company to earnings, uh, financials, 10 years of data on that, uh, comparing it to other companies, pro tips. So um, there's, there's a ton of information. We'd love for you to take some of our, our, uh, our pro picks and research them uh to, to your liking definitely definitely i mean i can tell you like from my own personal uh trading experience you know i've been i've been trading for since uh, around 2005 so obviously i've been in the game for a while and you know ever since uh pro uh came out pro picks came out you know it's been part of my daily routine uh you know researching my uh uh you know potential uh picks or any solid options get my ideas from uh from investing pro so obviously uh you know if if you do have access to that and that's why I think that many don't understand that, you know, when the big hedge funds and, and the institutional players make their investment uh, decisions, you know, there's so many different factors that go into it. Um, you know, the, the, the amount of research uh, that, that, that goes into uh, those decisions, obviously, uh, you know, 
now that you do have access to these tools, uh, you know, you got to take advantage of, of anything that, that, that really allows you to gain that edge uh, in the market, you know, especially when, you know, most market participants nowadays are, are other, you know, algorithms, you know, not, not real humans, obviously. So anything that can get you that edge uh, is, uh, is, is welcomed. And obviously investing pro pro plus uh, uh, pro picks is absolutely one of those features that you want uh, to be using in your uh, decision making. Um, if I choose to follow the pro picks portfolio, do you re recommend setting stop limit orders as risk management? Well, uh, before you answer that, I, I think any investment uh, that you go into, you got to set a stop loss before, uh, you know, you uh, even uh, make that purchase, you know, just a solid uh, uh, risk management uh, will, uh, can go a long way. Yeah, uh, I, I think a lot of that also depends on on the user preference, uh, and so you know some some users, for example, will use options to to hedge risk or ETFs or there's there's different ways of doing managing risk. So there's nothing specific that I can really say on that. Uh, it really depends on the individual risk preferences and profiles, um, on you know how, how you how you manage risk. But um, yeah, our our goal ultimately is just to create strategies that sort of inspire. And educate um, on the types of companies that are that are out there that are that are interesting. Yeah, definitely. Obviously, you know, there's there's so many different stocks, so many different different names that uh, you know, you, you don't even know that that trades as a public uh, company. So obviously, that's where uh, uh, Investing Pro comes in. Really gives you kind of broadens your horizons, uh, uh, especially if you're uh, only concentrated in a, a one sector, or a few names. Uh, definitely get some ideas uh, from there. Uh, is it possible to customize the filters, for example, market capitalization? We got a question here from uh, uh, Raphael. So uh, yeah, I think um, I think you went over that earlier. Yeah. So so um, in in the watch list, you do get more information about each of the individual holdings, for example. But if in terms of back testing the performance based on individual metrics, I think that's a that's a great. Uh, yeah, some great foreshadowing there. I think depending on the the, the demand, um, it is something on our on our product roadmap that we'd love to pursue. Uh, is being able to expose the underlying technology here to our users, and a back testing being um, where you can customize, for example, the market cap and different parameters of companies, and be able to see some of the same same returns historically of how that strategy would perform um you know that that's certainly uh, a possibility and a great idea for the future um for our users definitely and uh, yeah i think there's a lot of demand because you know this question keeps popping up obviously uh when will it be available in uh, different markets local markets um so yeah yeah I, you know i think there's a lot of excitement around uh, uh such a product and obviously going going global uh, you know into different markets uh especially something that investing.com does already uh with uh, uh you know the the, the feature or, or the importance of uh, localization um so definitely i think that is uh, something um uh, in the works and as you mentioned uh, earlier um so definitely i think um i think that about uh, wraps it up here in terms of uh, uh the questions uh if there are any final questions now would be the time i don't know if i missed any uh there there's a few moments that everything there are a few questions that came in at once there uh but um i think we went over most of that um and if there are any uh, uh final questions comments uh thoughts uh now is uh the time up oh, and and we do we do have one last uh, question here coming in uh from uh, uh gabriel are the stock picks long-term options or can they change from month to month so i need to sell and buy at the beginning of each uh, new month so i think uh, again that ties into kind of like the, the rebalancing of it yeah that, that's exactly right uh so it really depends um but we we use the latest data as of the the close of the of the of the month um to figure out what should be in the portfolio going the month forward and so in some cases it'll be the same companies if they're expected to continue to perform in other cases um they may get replaced by new new holdings um so um that's that's you know in a nutshell how, how that works uh, and so depending on 
uh, you know, how you're using these strategies, um, you, you can kind of decide um, the, the trading actions required. Yeah, I think uh, for for the most part, you know, uh, you do um, you will receive an email, right? There are alerts that, that that come out at the end of each month whenever there's a rebalancing. I think uh, as a investing pro user, pro plus user, uh, you receive an email uh, automatically uh, alerting you to any uh, sh uh, changes in the portfolio. So in terms of yeah. that, you know, starting, the, starting January first, yep, yeah, that's that's the that's the goal. Yeah, so uh, that would allow you to stay on top of uh, uh, these uh, different uh, changes in uh, the portfolio. We got a question from uh, Jose uh, asking um, if it's, if a stock is at fair value, uh, why is it part of the strategy? Yeah, great question. So, so they can they can be diff different. So there are different types of analytics. Uh, one is trying to just look at it in the kind of the intrinsic value of the company, which is the fair value. Um, and that can come to fruition. Um, it may take six months, 12 months, three months. It's kind of hard to, hard to know. Um, from a strategy portfolio perspective, um, while looking at those types of metrics is a consideration, this is really looking at, okay, what are the 20 best companies to hold at any given point in time? Um, and how do they play off of each other? Um, and so there, there are more aspects of say even momentum or, um, some of the other financial ratios uh, in addition to just the intrinsic value. So whenever, basically, whenever you're constructing a strategy, it's not only about, um, say, the fair value, it's looking at sort of uh, holistically uh, what, are, what are some companies that, that belong in the strategy together. Um, we got a follow-up question. How much money available do we need to follow the beat the S&P strategy? Uh, it really depends on the brokerage firm. It, there's no there's no like specific limitation for, as, as, as far as I can think. Uh, for example, like there are companies that offer fractional shares, um, and so so it kind of depends on on the brokerage firm. Um, but um, yeah, I, I would sort of you know leave it leave it leave it there um, because there's no so for example like if you're your user of Robinhood, um, even if Apple costs. Um, I, I, you know, 180 something dollars a share. Um, it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to put up $180 to buy one share of a fractional shares. You can, you can, you know, only buy $40 worth of that, that one share of, of stocks. It kind of depends on the brokerage firm. Um, I, would, I would kind of look at what are the terms and conditions of, of, of the broker. Yeah, I think for the most part, you know, even if you start investing with a hundred dollars, you know, just just starting off somewhere and keep adding to that every month, uh, you know, a, a set amount of money. Watch your gains come, you know, rise over the years. You know, com compounding that growth. Um, you know, it's 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 all about that. So yeah, you know, even if you start small um, and then you know build uh, your your portfolio over the years, you know, as long as you you have skin in the game, you're on, you know, you're in stocks. Um, you know, obviously a hedge against portfolio, uh, hedging your portfolio against the different uh, um, uh, scenarios. So obviously, even hundred dollars, two hundred dollars uh, is uh, something to consider to get you started. So uh, yeah, you know, I hope uh, I hope uh, that pretty much uh, answered uh, most of uh, uh, these questions. Um, you know, if, if, if thank you for 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 joining. Uh, you know, all your uh, all the attendees. Uh, hope you got a lot out of this one. Um, the available will be record. Uh, the uh, recording will be available, of course, afterwards. Um, I did get a bunch of uh, questions uh, asking about that, so you will get the, the uh, recording via the email that you signed up with. Um, so yeah, you can uh, view that again, unpack uh, uh, all that you saw in the uh, presentation. Um, and yeah, if there are any questions, of course, feel free to reach out either myself or Andy, you know, I'm on Twitter uh, a lot. You can find me, uh, Jesse Cohen, INV. Um, you can, uh, of course, uh, send any questions over to uh, uh, customer support to the uh, Investing Pro. And uh, don't forget to get, take advantage of the uh, ProPix10 coupon code. Uh, again, I shared uh, the uh, sign-up link and I shared the uh, coupon as well uh, in the chat box. Um, so yeah, hopefully, oh, we did get one last question there, Andy. Uh, what trading broker do you recommend? 
Oh, we 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 have uh, a page, right, Jesse? Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. We can find a whole bunch uh, um, on investing pro or on investing.com. Uh, uh, let me uh, see if I can find that real quick, and I can even share that here. Uh, but yeah, on, investing.com has all that information, all those different brokers, uh, uh, and um, of course, all the different features and benefits of each one. Uh, let me share that yeah. with uh, you all here. So I so think that, even just on investing.com slash brokers, you'll you'll see um, a whole bunch of different options. It's it's kind of hard because depending on the country you're in, they there's different brokers that specialize in, in those markets. So we just have a list um, on investing.com slash brokers that you can find. Yeah, yeah, and I just uh, shared that uh, on uh, the uh, group chat there as well. Uh, obviously, you got to do your research uh, uh, ahead of time whenever uh, you uh, choose uh, or, or whenever choosing your uh, broker. But again, if it's on investing.com, know that they're trustworthy. Uh, you can do all your research there. Um, so, yeah, you know, again, all your information that you need relevant to financial markets, investing.com is your one stop shop for that. Anything else on your end, uh, Andy? All good. Um, yeah, look, really, really excited and looking forward to to seeing how all of you and and uh, you know users across investing use these these, and we'll obviously be monitoring to see how we can improve. Uh, so any feedback you have, our, our support channels are always open. We love to hear from you, um, and and good luck. Yeah, great. <laughs> Yeah, so, um, you know, I know it's uh, still early, um, but yeah, I want to wish you all, uh, you know, happy holiday season, uh, you know, happy new year uh, already, uh, you know, 2023 is uh, approaching uh, the end, 2024, right around the corner. Um, so yeah, again, happy trading, happy investing to you all. Um, all these uh, different resources uh, with Investing Pro, Pro Picks uh, to help you in uh, the year ahead. And I hope uh, you got uh, something out of these uh, or, or the last hour or so was uh, informative and enjoyable to you all. Uh, I think uh, we're ready to sign off, Andy. Sounds great. Thanks so much, everyone. All right. Have a good one.